Join Kids Hat Family. the new colors you just bought I need to draw and color a bird for my science assignment Shaw sure, tofu here you go Thanks Tia Hey tofu I am very hungry Can I have one of the chocolates you bought at the store Actually, Tia, I bought them for myself. Can't you wait till dinner? Tofu, you're so selfish. You're like the selfish giant. N no, I'm not. Yes, you are. Let me tell you about him and then you can decide. The Selfish Giant Once upon a time, there was a beautiful garden. It had big trees laden with fruits and many flowers of different colors and fragrances. The grass was so soft that it felt like a cozy bed. Different birds sang melodies in the garden the whole day long. The children of the village loved playing in the garden. They would come there as soon as school got over and would stay till evening. In the far end of the garden was a big castle. People often said that the giant who owned the garden used to live there. But it was empty now. Nobody knew what had happened to the giant and they thought he would never return. Till one day, the earth shook and there were loud thumping sounds. With each thump, the children were lifted off the ground and back again. Oh no! It is the giant! It cannot be. Why has he returned after all these years? The giant saw all the children in his garden and yelled loudly. What are these children doing here? This is my garden. Get out! Get out of here! All the children got scared and ran away. The giant then built a large wall around the garden so that no one could ever enter it. The next day, the giant went to the garden, thinking that he will pluck some fruits and flowers. But the trees were so sad without the children, that they shed all their leaves and fruits and lay bare. Even the flowers that had blossomed became so sad that they went back into the ground. Oh, I feel so sad. I don't feel like dressing up with my leaves today. Yes, without the children, 
Even I don't want to come out. I wish the giant had never returned. Who will I sing for in this empty garden? I am leaving. As time went by, winters came and passed. When spring came, it was lush green everywhere. The roadsides were filled with colourful flowers and green trees. Everyone wondered how the garden must look too. But with all the sadness present in the garden, spring did not come to it. The garden remained frozen. The only ones happy in the garden were snow and frost. With no spring to melt them, they became the masters of the garden. I will cover every tree of this garden so that it looks white. And so it went and covered every tree till all one could see was white. I am going to invite the North Wind to join us here. The icy cold wind swept over the garden. It knocked the chimney pots off the castle and rattled its roof. Then the naughty wind had another idea. My friends, let's invite hail over too and claim this garden as ours forever. Soon hail came down on the garden. All four of them got together and caused havoc. Hail and wind attacked the castle roof every day and took off its slates one by one. One day, while the giant was lying in his bed, he heard beautiful music come in from his bedroom window. He thought perhaps the king's musicians were passing the garden. He looked out of his window and saw that a small bird was sitting on the window ledge and singing. Has spring finally arrived? He looked beyond into the garden. The icy wind had stopped blowing. The snow was melting and frost was vanishing. Hail couldn't be seen anywhere. Instead, he saw the most beautiful sight. The children have broken into the garden. Some children had found a hole in the wall and had entered the garden from there. They were on every tree and were happily sprawling on the grass. The trees were so happy that they covered themselves with green leaves. The flowers also came out and the grass was smiling gleefully. Even the birds were chirping new happy tunes. What I did was terrible. I was selfish. I should have never ever blocked the children out of the garden. I will go and correct my mistake now. The giant went out and broke the wall down. From now on, this garden is your playground forever. The children were so happy that they hugged the giant. From then on, the giant played with the children every day. As time passed, 
the giant grew very old and tired. He wouldn't go out to play with the children. He would only watch them from his window. One day, he saw a little boy crying. So he went to see him. What is the matter, little boy? The boy's hands were bleeding. This made the giant very angry. Who has hurt you? Tell me his name and I will punish him. The little boy calmed the giant and said, Calm down, my friend. These are wounds of love. Then the boy took the giant's hand and took him to the garden of paradise with him. After some time, the other children came to where the little boy had been. They found the giant lying on the grass and covered with white flowers. He had died with a loving smile on his face. I really was being the selfish giant, dear. I am so sorry. Yes, you were. I will change that immediately. Here, please have some chocolates, dear. Thank you, Tofu. I am happy that you have changed. But it is dinner time already. I will now have the chocolates for dessert. Animals have such an easy life, dear. No school, no rules, no homework. What do they have to worry about? Everybody has their troubles, Tofu. Let me tell you the story of Thumbelina. Once upon a time, a woman lived by herself in a far away village. She was very lonely after her husband had died. She always wanted to have a child, but alas, she didn't have any. One day, she went to her friend, who was a witch. The witch gave her a grain of barley. And told her to go back home and plant it. The woman did as she was told. The next morning, a beautiful plant had grown from the seed. It had a lovely flower that looked like a tulip. The woman had never seen a flower like that and was mesmerized by its beauty. She gently kissed one of its petals. As she did that, the flower blossomed open. Inside it was a beautiful little girl, no bigger than the size of the woman's thumb. The woman instantly fell in love with her and called her Thumbelina. Thumbelina took away the woman's loneliness. In the day, she would tell her stories and talk to her. 
Sometimes she would make Thumbelina a boat out of a tulip petal which she could row in a plate full of water. At night, Thumbelina would sleep in a bed out of a walnut shell with a blanket made of a rose petal. One night, as she was sleeping, a frog came to her window and saw her. He thought to himself, what a beautiful girl. She will make a lovely bride for my son. And so he grabbed Thumbelina and hopped away to his home. When his son saw his bride-to-be, he was very happy. She is beautiful, father. I will marry her. But before that, I want to build her a beautiful house. Okay, son. I will put her on the water lily in the middle of the pond till then. This way she will not be able to escape. And so the frog put Thumbelina in the middle of the pond on a water lily leaf. Thumbelina tried to escape from her new home, but when she couldn't, she broke down crying. Two minnows were sitting under the same leaf and they heard her cry. They asked her about her troubles and when she told them, they decided to help her. They nibbled away the lily stem. Soon, it broke and floated away with Thumbelina. Just when Thumbelina thought she was free, a beetle came down and took her away to his home. He called over his friends to introduce them to his pretty prisoner. But the beetle's friends told him that she was too different than them and she didn't belong with them. I agree. I think I should let her go. And so he dropped her in the long grass and flower. Thumbelina was very happy that she was free from her captors. However, she still did not know where her home was. She spent many days in the grass and between the flowers. She would eat the pollen of the flowers and drink the dew from the leaves. One day, as she was walking, she stumbled upon a small house made of mud. It had a strange round entrance. She went up to it and knocked on the door. A mouse opened the door. Oh, hello there. Isn't it cold out there for you today? Come in, please. Thank you so much. Once Thumbelina was settled comfortably in the mouse's house, he asked her about who she was. Thumbelina told him her entire story. Do not worry, 
You can stay here as long as you like. So Thumbelina started staying in her new found home. To make herself useful in the house, she would cook for the mouse and tell him stories. After a few days, the mouse said he had invited a guest over. He is the richest mouse in all the land. He is a very good friend of mine. That night, the mouse's friend came over for dinner. They all talked and had a very good time. During the course of dinner, the friend fell in love with Thumbelina and declared that he would marry her. Thumbelina had no choice but to go along with what was happening. When the friend offered to show her his home, she agreed to visit his house and the three of them set off together. On the way, they entered a tunnel. There they found an injured swallow lying on the ground. The mouse's friend kicked it and rudely said, Serves her right. What is she doing in the tunnels? He should have stayed in the air. Thumbelina was shocked to see that someone could treat another like this. Unseen by the mice, she ran away from there. Once she was sure that the mice had left, she came back and attended to the swallow. She took great care of her. Till she was fit to fly again. It became spring by the time the swallow could fly again. She told Thumbelina, I have to join my family and friends. They have flown away to a warmer place. I cannot stay here. Come with me. But Thumbelina had had enough adventure and did not want to go anywhere else. And so the swallow flew away. A few months had passed when the love-struck friend of the mouse found Thumbelina again. Oh my beloved, I have been looking for you everywhere. Now I have found you and must marry you. Thumbelina knew there was no way out of it for her. So she asked him if she could spend one last day out in the open air before she was confined to living the rest of her life underground with him. As she roamed in the open fields for one last time, she heard a familiar voice. Come, come away with me, where your spirit will always be free. Thumbelina saw her old friend who had returned for her. This time around, she agreed and hopped on the back of the swallow and they took off. They flew over land and water and fields of green.
When they reached the land of the flowers, the swallow landed Thumbelina on a beautiful flower petal. This is the kingdom of the flowers and that is their king. Thumbelina saw a handsome young king with beautiful wings. He was surrounded by lovely flowers. As soon as she saw him, she knew she wanted to call this place home. Her presence attracted the king's attention. He too fell in love with her immediately. Will you marry me? Yes! As happiness spread across her face, she grew a beautiful pair of wings and became the Flower Queen. Oh wow, Tia! I don't know what I would do if I would land in such a strange world. I think I am happy where I am. Good morning, Tofu. Mm, good morning, Tia. Are you alright, Tofu? Yes, but I'm worried about my friend Sam. <sighs> Who is that? And why are you so worried about him? Sam is new to our school. He joined my class last week. I like him very much. But some other boys have been lying about him, saying that he is not a nice boy. Oh, that's bad. And are you sad because he is your friend? Yes, I want people to see how good Sam is. And I don't know how to make it happen. If Sam is a good person, then I don't think you have anything to worry about, Tofu. Mm, I don't understand. Why? Let me explain it to you with the story I know. The Princess and the Pea Once upon a time, a young prince wanted to get married. So he went around the world looking for the right princess to marry. Alas, he found none. Something or the other was always amiss in all the princesses he met to be a true princess to his people. One stormy night, after the prince came back home, he and his family were having their dinner. when there was a commotion outside the castle door. The queen went to see what was going on. What is the matter, guard? Uh, there is a young girl at the door, your highness. She says she is a princess. Intrigued, the queen went to see the princess. When she got there, she was surprised to see a young girl drenched.
from head to toe. Who are you? I am a princess. I was passing through when the storm and lightning spooked the horses and they dragged my carriage into slush and mud. My men are still with the carriage trying to repair it. I have walked many miles to reach here. Nobody who looked at the young girl could believe that she could ever be a princess. She didn't look anything like a princess. With her hair disheveled and clothes and shoes full of mud, she looked like a poor peasant girl. You are welcome to stay here, O oh princess. My maids will prepare a royal room and arrange for a hot bath and dry clothes for you. Do join us for supper once you feel better. Come on in. Thank you very much, Your Highness. By the time the Queen returned to the dining table to join her family, the Prince had been informed about the stranger at the door and the Queen's decision. Mother, do you really believe that she is a princess? Her appearance betrays her, but her eyes shine with courage and there is humility and grace in her behaviour just like that of a princess. However, we must wait till tomorrow morning to know whether she is really a princess or not. Saying so, the queen retired from the dinner table and went up to the room that was being prepared for the princess. Your Highness, the princess is in the bath. We are preparing the bed for her. Very well. Fetch me 20 of the softest mattresses that the castle has to offer. Yes, Your Highness. Once the maids had left, The queen took out a pea from her pocket and placed it right in the middle of the princess's bed. When the maids returned with the mattresses, she ordered them to place them on the top of the pea. That night, the princess slept on her special bed. But she had a sleepless night. She kept tossing and turning all night long. In the morning, she joined the queen for breakfast. How are you, my dear? Ah, uh, I am well, thank you. But you look so tired. Is something wrong? You must tell me. Forgive me, Your Highness. I do not wish to sound like an ungrateful guest, but I haven't slept all night. My bed was really soft. But something kept poking me in the back and I had bruises all over. The queen smiled happily because she knew that the girl in front of her 
was a true princess. Only a real princess who has lived all her life in comfort can feel a small pea kept 20 mattresses below her and only a kind princess would not mention her discomfort unless asked to do so. Son, she is the one you have been looking for. Soon the prince was married to the princess of his dreams and they happily lived in the kingdom where all the people loved and respected them both a lot. Wow, Tia! No matter where the princess would have gone, people would have always recognized her because of her behavior. Exactly, Tofu! And the same thing applies to your friend Sam. If he is a good person, soon people will be able to see that in him. And if he's not, people will be able to see that also. Yes, you are right, Tia. I don't think I have to worry about him anymore. I am sure everyone will see his truth soon. Tofu, it's your friend Kim. She needs some help from you. Tell her I'll call her later. Kim, Tofu will call you back. Families from the store. Why didn't you talk to her, Tofu? I'm watching TV. I don't want to talk to her right now. But she needed your help. That's okay. If it's urgent, she can call someone else. She's called the second time and you've refused to talk to her. That's mean, Tofu. Especially because I remember how she was always there when you needed help from her. What difference does it make? Hear it for yourself. It was Christmas Eve and Mary was waiting for her Uncle Peter. Each year he gave her a present on this day. Hello Mary. Wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you Uncle. Merry Christmas to you too! Wow! It's a nutcracker! It's so lovely! Let me put it in the cabinet with my other toys. night when Mary was sleeping, a sound woke her up. What's that? Mice! So many of them! Mary saw that there were many, many mice running around on the floor of her room. 
and there was a stranger that was the mice queen who had seven heads oh no am i dreaming how can this be mary is in trouble friends let's go to her rescue The brave nutcracker spoke to all the soldiers that stood with him in the cabinet. The soldiers found courage in the nutcracker's charge and they drew out their swords and jumped out of the cabinet. All of them attacked the mice with their swords, guns, and sugar cannons but soon the nutcracker was surrounded by mice i'm surrounded i can't free myself oh no the nutcracker seeing the nutcracker surrounded mary took one of her shoes and sent it flying at the mice but before she could see what happened she fainted the next morning she woke up and found herself in her own bed she tried explaining to everyone what had happened but no one believed her oh why won't anyone believe me i saw the mice and the seven headed queen with my own eyes i have been saved the nutcracker i believe you mary i believe everything you've just said I'll tell you an interesting story about the nutcracker toy. About my toy? Yes. Many years ago, there lived a mice queen in the toy land's king's palace. One day, She lost seven of her sons to the traps laid by the king's men in the castle. Oh no! The angry queen cursed the princess and turned her into an ugly princess. The spell could be broken only if she could break the hardest nut. The poor princess What happened then uncle? The nutcracker prince helped the princess break the hardest nut. As soon as he had done that, the spell was lifted off the princess. However, the spell shifted on to the prince and he became ugly. The princess must have felt so sad. Quite the opposite. She forgot all about the prince, how he had helped her, and she chased him away. Later, Mary went to her room. And looked at the nutcracker. She now looked at him in a different light. and before she knew she loved him one day the doorbell rang very early morning mary went to see who it was it was a very handsome young boy hello Can I help you? Uh, hello Mary. I am the prince of Toyland. How can that be? You were cursed by the mice queen to be an ugly nutcracker. 
Your true love towards me has lifted the spell of me and made me handsome once again. Will you marry me? Yes. Mary said yes and became the princess of Toyland. She lived with the prince happily ever after. Uh, I am being the princess who forgot the nutcracker prince. Am I not? Absolutely, Tofu. Kim's always been there to help you. And now, when she needs your help, you're ignoring her. Oh, I feel terrible about the way I have behaved. Let me call up Kim and help her. Don't forget to apologize to her. Thanks, dear. I won't forget. Tofu, should we go play? Hi. Hmm. Actually, my friends are waiting for me. Hey, guys. Anyone wants to hear a story? Yes. Yes. yes! yes! Okay. Peacock and the Crane Once upon a time, there was a really beautiful peacock. And he knew that he was beautiful. Look at my tail! Has anyone ever had such a beautiful tail? My feathers are so gorgeous! All the animals disliked it when the peacock behaved like that. But he didn't care. One day, he came across a crane. Hello, crane. Hello. Have you seen my feathers and tail? Aren't they beautiful? Yes, it is. I agree. It's the best. Unlike your pale tail. So colorless and boring. I, on the other hand, look like a king. Yes, that may be so. But can your lovely feathers help you to fly? Like I can? High in the sky. Amongst the clouds and the stars. High enough to see the beauty of the earth. I think not. You just stay here, close to the ground. Like an ordinary cock. The peacock had nothing to say to the crane. He no longer felt as proud of his feathers as he used to and he realized that there was more to life than just looking beautiful. That's a great story, Tia. And I realize I must go apologize to someone. I thought you might feel that way after hearing this story. Well, please excuse me for a moment.
for your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.